Okay, well, we'll get started with the first report that we're going to look at. On the handout, the first report is about finding gaps in nonfiction. So just quickly, what is a gap? A gap is an area of your collection where you're missing some books on a topic or on a certain genre or trend. Could be fiction, could be nonfiction, could be any part of your collection. So these reports are going to help you with different areas of your collection. But this one, um, I wanted to go through it with you guys first because it's quite long, but it's super, super informative if you're looking at your nonfiction report. So I'm just going to share my screen here. Let me just see that. I want it to look at my other screen. It's showing up just nicely, Lena. Okay, well, I'll move Simply Reports over to this side. There we go. There we go. Perfect. Okay. All right. So I'm on the handout here. This is an item count report. So I'm going to go to the items tab. Item count reports here. The first thing we're going to do is select some columns for output. So I would like to see the item call number. When I'm selecting these columns, this is what's going to appear in my report. So um, item assigned collection name, sum year to date circulation, which is down here at the bottom, sum year to date circ count. Now, the other suggestion I have here is that you use previous year circ count if you're early on in the year, because otherwise, um, you know, I would say March or earlier, you're not going to have very many circulation. It's not going to be very representative of how that collection is actually circulating. So in this report, we're looking at little sections of the Dewey system and comparing how many books we have to how many circulations those books have. So if there's fewer circulations, we might want to weed that collection. If there's more circulations, we might want to add to that collection, more circulations or less compared to the number of books. So um, column selected for sort, item call number. This means that my list of items is going to be organized by call number, which is really helpful um, in looking at things in order in the Dewey system. Um, item general filters. We're going to do assigned branch. Would anybody like to sacrifice their branch, offer their branch up for uh, for? It's not a sacrifice, Lena. It's not a it's sacrifice. It's a great opportunity for us to, to play with your collection data. What do you think? Any takers? Oh, Angie from New Sarepta. Okay. So I'm going to pick New Sarepta from this list. There we go. For collection, I'm going to choose non... So that you want to choose the nonfiction collection code that your library uses. Um, I'm not sure if New Sarepta uses nonfiction or nonfiction dash adult, but I can actually pick them both. So if I hold down shift, I can select both of them. That way I won't miss out on what collection she's um, got there in, in her lab. New Sarepta uses, uses nonfiction. Okay, then I can just click on nonfiction. Okay, now the other important thing I'm going to want is record status final. And Jessica touched on this in her last week's um, Simply Report seminar. You want record status final because it shows what's actually on your shelves right now. If I choose provisional, those are records of items that are currently on order. If I choose deleted, those are records that are deleted. And if I choose nothing, it shows me all three. So we want to make sure that we are always selecting final when we're running these reports. Now, the last part of this report is item call number filters. So for this, we're going to choose a classification number and we're going to look at one section of the Dewey. So of the Dewey ranges. So um, let's look at 100 to 199.9999. So you'll see in my tips and tricks under this report, um, you want to make sure if you're a yellowhead library that you go to three decimal places here. Otherwise, you're going to miss out on all that last little section of, of the Dewey collection. Um, and I confirmed with Laura, um, our cataloger who's sitting in on here, that that's as far as yellowhead goes in cataloging your items. I don't know if some of you go further if you catalog items um, in your own library, but you'd want to go to the very, very end of that collection. So now this report's going to show me... Um, it's going to show me the call number um, and a count of the number of books that have that call number. 
the item um, assigned collection name, so for all of them it will say nonfiction, and it's going to add up the year-to-date circ count. So how many times um, items with that call number have circulated so far this year? So let's go ahead and submit that report. Okay, so you can see here um, that with the call number 129CAV, there's only one item in New Sarepta's collection. You might see sometimes two, like here. This might be two copies of the same book, or it might be two books on a very similar on a similar topic by the same author, which does happen in nonfiction too. You know, lots of people write manuals about um, about computers or something like that. So you might have the same author in the same topic area. So no matter there. Now I'm going to download this report. And while you're doing that, we had a question. Yes. Uh, the question is, do you need a publication date for this report? What are your recommendations with a, adding a publication date? I have in the past run a publication date. Um, now, the trick with publication date is it just gives you an idea of when that item was published, not when it was added to your collection. But I have done that to get a sense of the age. And then, um, because I'm a big Excel nerd, I've used mean, median, and mode to figure out kind of the average age. So that would be um the mean i'll figure out the median so how many books that'll find me the middle number and then i can look at how many books were um added before that date and how many books were added after that date so were more books added in the past than in recent years and then if i look at mode that tells me the most frequent year that items were added so sometimes that can give me an idea of um did this collection seem to receive an infusion of funding in 2003? Because there's 20 books in this collection with a 2003 publication date and there isn't really that pattern anywhere else. So I have done that. I'm not gonna get into how to do that today, um, just for simplicity's sake, but um, by all means include pub date and nerd out if that is what you wanna do. Okay, so here's this report um, as an Excel um, spreadsheet here. Now, what I wanna do is I wanna add these things up and I'm gonna move these totals into that um, sample Dewey breakdown Excel spreadsheet. I'll just drag it over. This is one of the handouts I gave you guys. So I'm gonna just drag it away because before I do that, I'm gonna use some Excel functions to add things up. So I'm gonna add a sum function here. That's gonna add up all the numbers in this column. So it's adding up all the numbers in the total item year to date circ count column. So these are all the circulations for the 100s this year so far. And this is all the items. Now to get a better sense of this, I should have probably used year to date circ count because we are, or not year to date, um, previous year circ count because we are still pretty early in the year. But we're just gonna pop this into the sheet and see kind of how it compares to some other collections. So I'm going to go into my sample Dewey breakdown worksheet here. And you see how I have the 100s here. And I put what topic area this would be, philosophy and psychology. So I'm going to put the total number of items, which is 49. And I'm going to put the year to date circs, which is 13 right here. Now, um, if I were to run this report for for every single um, every single collection, it would add up all the items I had down here and give me a total collection count of my nonfiction. So um, then these these formulas here would populate, right? So So um, if I were to do, let's just throw some numbers. Well, actually, let's look at my example. So I have an example here of a collection assessment I did do for another library one, uh, once upon a time. And so these are actual numbers in here. So I just ran that report, that same report we just ran, I ran for every section of the Dewey and I popped the numbers in here. And as I did that, these um, columns filled. So it's giving me here, because of these formulas, a percentage of the collection. So the computer science information and general works, or the zeros, is 2% of the whole nonfiction collection. And it's also 2% of the total CERCs. So to me, 
that sounds pretty good. We want, you know, we want kind of a one-to-one -one circulation ratio as much as we can. So here we have the 100s, 4% of the collection, 7% of the total circs. So this collection's circing quite well. Um, you might want to add a couple items to this. You might want to break this down and see which ones are, which parts of that collection are really, really circulating. Because you could always run this report again. Let me just pull it up again. We could run it again, but instead do 100 to 110.999. And it would give me a very specific, okay, so for this one, there are no, bo no books in the collection in that call number area. But um, it would give me a really specific breakdown. If you look at my tips and tricks, I really suggest that in the 600s, you break it down at that granular type of level, because that's a very large collection. As you can see for this library, it was 27% of their whole nonfiction collection and 36% of their total CIRCs. So um, a very popular area and uh, worth breaking down a little bit because we were able to see here that um, you know food and drink was the most popular. So your cookbooks <laughs> were the most popular area of this whole collection. Um, but also child rearing was quite popular, 21% of the of the collection. Oh no, sorry. Child rearing had a lot of the collection, but less of the circs. So um, you know, maybe these books are a bit old and need to be looked at a little bit more. Does this make sense to everyone? So you you wanna what's what's gonna flag your attention is columns where there's a bit of a discrepancy between percentage of collection, percentage of circs. There's no hard and fast rule for how to weed that area. It just might be an area you want to go look at literally on the shelf and examine the physicality of those books, examine the publication dates, um, and see are there only five titles in that collection that are really circulating well, or is it um, all the whole collection? Uh, it might indicate an older collection that uh, needs some updating. Any questions so far? There's none from our um, our participants. Okay. Um, I just wanted to make a comment. Mm -hmm. um, a, a thought went through my mind, and I wondered if there and I want I had wondered if there were any recommended guidelines for what percent of the collection each Dewey area should have. And then I answered my own question um, uh, when I realized that it, it really depends on your community and your community needs. So that the the the, the, the amount of funds that you put towards each Dewey area is really going to change from library to library because your user needs are going to be different. And that's where your, um, your community profile really comes into play when you're analyzing this data and thinking about where you want to put your funds. Yeah, that information is going to color how you interpret the percentage of total CIRCs here. Mm -hmm. And um, um, as I've talked about with some other libraries, um, having that community profile and knowing what some groups in your community might need, especially when it comes to health and wellness. So your, um, your 500s, where the science books are, but also the 610s, you're gonna wanna look at, at your community. Does your community need more resources on alcoholism and drug addiction? You might wanna think about that based on what's going on in your area. Um, does your um, community have a lot of seniors? Do you need more books in this area about staying fit as you age? Um, so that's really going to play into how you interpret these results. Good comment, Jessica. <laughs> Anything else? Okay. Yeah, nothing from our from our our group. Don't don't be shy to ask questions, everyone. Just use the question box. Both Laura and I are monitoring questions, and um, we will um, share them out loud um, for the whole group to hear and for Lena to answer. So please don't be shy with that if you have questions. For sure. Okay, we'll move on to the next um, report. But if you have questions about the previous one, go ahead and jump in and, and ask that. Um, so the next report is hold requests that might indicate gaps in your collection. So, if you notice that your patrons are bringing in a lot of items on a certain topic in on hold, it might be because you don't have a lot in your library or a lot of up-to-date information in your library about that. Now, we can certainly guess at some of the holds that people are bringing in because we all know that 
you know, if there's a new Frozen movie released, that's going to be at the top of the holds list. <laughs> but um, you might be surprised too at what you find. So um, for this report, we're going to do a holds count report. So again, it's going to pull the items that are on hold and count for us how many holds requests there are. So holds count report. So, oops, I don't want that. I'm going to go to um, what I have here, column selected for output, mark bibliographic ID. And I just like to have this in case I want to look it up later or find out some more information about it. I like to have the bib record ID so I can search for it quickly in Polaris or Leap. Uh, mark browse author, so the author first and last name, mark browse title, and mark primary type of material. And what, what the word mark in front of this means is that it's pulling it from the mark record of the item. Um, I don't need any columns for sort, but now I'm going to filter my items a little bit. So in this optional green box at the top, I want select top number of requests. So let's do, I, this is auto completing for me, but I'll put top 100 request, most requested titles. Hold general filters. Uh, library pickup branch, and I'm going to put my library in here. Do any libraries want to see their top 100 holds? Libraries need to be fast, fast on the draw here. Edson, <laughs> Edson, Edson wants, Edson wants it. Okay. <laughs> Perfect. Okay, so Edson, we've picked. I don't need to worry for holds. Um, request. Remember how I said before we want to make sure it says item record status, item status final, record status final, I don't need to worry about that for holds um, for this one because it's in, it's good for us to even see holds on items that are not, um, if they're in track but they're not in our library yet or, or not um, shipped yet, if that makes sense. Okay, so um, these are the top 100 holds for Edson sorted by number of requests. So this book, The Best Kind of People, has 13 requests. There's been a couple times where I've run this report with a library and they've said, oh, that's because that's our book club book. <laughs> so I don't know, Edson, is this your book club book and these um, people are waiting for their holds? It could be that. Um, Jumanji, the next level. Now, the reason why I like to have Mark type of material description is you'll see that it is the Blu-ray and DVD that people are looking for here, not necessarily just the DVD or just the Blu-ray. And then you'll see down here the DVD has also been requested four times. So this might give you an idea of what formats your users are using for um, watching movies. Um, yeah, so some interesting things here. And uh, what I would do is I would just kind of browse through here and um, check out to see if I could find any trends, right? I might even download this report and um, do something where I could sort this I, these um, items by material types so that I could get a sense of my different collections, right? So um, I'm gonna show you this in another, uh, another report, but if I hold down shift, if I click the first column and hold down shift, it selects all these columns and I can format this as a table. So let's format it like this. And yes, my table has headers. Now I can sort these columns by type. So let's see, let, I just want to see books. I'm going to uncheck all the rest of these. Oops. Book. So now it's just showing me the most popular books. Now, unfortunately, because not every library uses the same collection code, we can't put collection code in here because it could be, um, you know, at Edson, this is an adult fiction in, I don't know, Jasper, this is mystery, right? Because we all use different collection codes and we break down our collections differently. We can't really break it down that way when we're looking at materials from all across track. But, you know, I can always investigate more about what these different books are about using the bib record ID. So, um, Definitely, this looks like a children's material. So yeah, I would just go through here and um, sort some of these out and see what um, is coming up. So in my how to use this report, 
um, I suggest if you have lots of holds, you might want to purchase that item or a second copy. Um, it's worth investigating how many holds there are in total to see how long it'll be before your patron gets a copy. Um, I know not everybody has endless pools of money, so nobody has endless pools of money, so you might not buy that second copy anyways, but um, interesting to consider if, if you do see a really popular item on there. Um, another suggestion I had on here was look for trends and topics. If someone's bringing in a whole bunch of books on Alzheimer's, this may be an area you want to purchase more items for. If you notice a lot of picture books coming in, you might want to up your picture book collection a little bit. And how I would look for these items to see what they are. So I'm going to just copy this bibliographic record ID and I'm going to go into Leap. I'll just sign in quickly. And I can search um, by bibliographic ID number just to see a little bit more information about that item, whether it's an adult item, whether it's a children's item. So I go into Find. And I'm not doing a patron. I'm looking for a bibliographic record. And I'm going to search by uh, ID number. What is it? Where is it? Let me just see. <laughs> control number. And I'm going to paste that control number in there. So the best kind of people, this was that book that had 13 holds at Edson. Okay, so there's lots of copies available in the system, so this should have no problem coming in for your book club if that's indeed what it's being used for. But if I look at the mark record, I could see even kind of what what area it's from. Well, maybe not the mark record, maybe in items. There we go. I can see shelf location and collection code for this item from other libraries. So a lot of libraries have this in adult fiction safe to assume this is an adult fiction item. So that's how I would investigate. I would use bib bibliographic record ID. That's also known as control number to investigate a little bit more about these items. If I couldn't tell immediately whether it was fiction, nonfiction, or children's, all I can tell is that it's a book, right? Any questions about that? We do, actually. Okay. Um, this one is from Stony Plain. Hmm. Um, they want to know, you might have an uh, uh, or relatively or quite a few books on hold on a certain topic, but that those particular books might not make the top 100. So how do you see how do you see that? Um, if you wanted to see more, uh, okay, so let me just I'm going to not save this one. Um, let's go on back into hold count reports. Um, I think I could get rid of this select top number of requests and just press submit. Mm -hmm. And Oh, it looks like it might stop at 100 results. Either that or Edson has exactly 100. <laughs> oh, it un oh. oh, sorry, I didn't. I'm going to just exit out of these. There we go. I was looking at the old report I ran. So I'm going to make sure this is unselected. Submit. 698 results. So yeah. um, Edson has 698 holds in the queue. Um, Obviously, right now is kind of a weird time because holds aren't being fulfilled. So everything's going to like if you run this report tomorrow, it'll probably look the same. So because people can't place holds and we can't fill them. Um, but yeah, so if you wanted to see absolutely everything, you just would not limit that that number at all, that top number. Mm -hmm. There was another comment earlier on, Lena, mm -hmm. um, just relating to the community profiles that we were talking about. Could I jump in with that? Sure. Sure. The comment um, was around, we had been, we were talking about um, different groups within the community that might be wanting materials. And I think you had um, brought up the, the, the example of, of maybe people with addictions issues. And the question was around, well, how, how do you know they need those books if they don't take them out or if they're just coming into the library to use them? And I just had some thoughts around that. Again, um, it would be going back to your community profile to maybe see what kinds of um, organizations in the community are serving different groups. So for example, if you have an addiction center in your community, that might give you a clue that you might need to purchase um, some books to support those who are um, uh, uh, you know, going through addictions um, programs or whatnot. 
to, to help you decide whether or not to buy them. The other thing that you could think about, um, the, the comment was, how, how do you know, or sorry, what happens if they don't take the items out? Um, you might want to be watching what kinds of items are just being left out in the library. Um, that's also a good way to let you know how your collection is being used. So a couple of times a year or, you know, um, may, maybe ongoing, keep track of what's just being left out by your customers because then you get a sense of what they're browsing for in the library without signing them out. Now there is a way in Polaris, um, and I know some libraries do this, I've observed some of them do this, where they go yeah. around daily and they do an in-house count. So they collect all the books that are left out on the table and they check them into Polaris, but they check them in as an in-house use, not as a check-in. And if you do that, you could run that exact same first report we did, but um, instead of CERC, um, what was it? S item year to date CERC. Um, instead of, you could do item in, in house use count. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Which is it's one of there. the things on here. I'm gonna try to figure out where it is. <laughs> But yeah, you could run that same report, but with in-house use to get a sense if any of those sections of your Dewey are being used and left out on, on um, tables. Um, I mean, that's pretty much, that's as good as we can kind of, here it is, some previous year in-house use count or year to date in-house use count. So um, yeah. that's pretty much as good as we can get without being psychic, right? Because if somebody pulls a book off a shelf, looks at it and puts it back exactly where it was, we, we can't really know that. But we do know that for some of these more sensitive topics around addiction or sexuality, um, spousal abuse, these sorts of things, they those books are not likely to be taken out because people are um, embarrassed or ashamed of these of these situations in their lives. So, um, you know, worth having those materials and ensuring that they're up to date. Right. Yeah, there's a number of comments and questions that have come in around this, Lena. Um, if you have a second, we can go through them. Um, uh, one of our, our guests have said, you can also check the books that seem in bad shape. Mm -hmm. um, so that might give you an idea of what's being um, uh, taken out more frequently. Um, uh, someone did say Polaris does allow you to track in-house use, which we covered. So, so that is a really handy thing, especially especially for uh, larger libraries. Um, Haley, our consultant colleague at PRL, has noted that if you use record sets, you can upload an Excel to a record set and then click between them to investigate. I think here we're talking about looking at topics. So. There is some work that you can do with record sets to investigate topics a little bit more deeply if you want. Um, I think that was it for the comments. Everything else that we've we've everything else we've covered here. And if I haven't covered someone's question appropriately, just chime back in again, and I'll I'll make sure to interrupt Lena at her next pause here. Thank Great. you. Well, and thank you everyone for saving your questions because we are rocketing through this. I only have two more reports to go through with you. So let's zoom along. The next report I'm gonna show you is uh, most popular items in a collection in the past year. So this can give you an idea of, um, of trends and topics and genres that might be circulating. You might notice a lot of thrillers circulating. You might notice a lot of romance books. So um, again, it's gonna be running the report and then relying on your kind of powers of, of observation. So item we're going to do an item report item list report this time though okay so column selected for output item assigned collection name um, item barcode again i like to have the barcode um, just in case i want to look the item up again and i usually like to make that the first one um, mark title Uh, mark author, oops, that's up here. Item call number. Sorry, you guys get to listen to me clicking. And item year to date circ count.
and columns selected for so sort, we're going to sort it by item year to date cert count. So that's going to give us the items with the most circulations at the top. So item general filters. Again, how about I would somebody like to volunteer their library and collection? All right, anyone? Stony Plain. Stony Plain. Oh, and before you keep going with this, um, there was a comment here. I, um, uh, it was Erna from Stony Plain had wondered about the previous year. Um, I hope, Erna, I'm um, interpreting your question correctly. And I hope that I'm answering this correctly in that I, I don't know that you can look at previous year data for this. Y yes, you could. You could. You would just okay. use oh, um, item previous year circ count. Okay. So how about let's do that instead? Sure. Thank you. It's just alphabetical, right? So item year to date circ count is going to be further down the list than item previous year circ count. But let's look at last year's circulation. And Erna or whoever from Stony Plain posed this or volunteered themselves, which collection? Would you like to look at? Stoney, do you have a collection preference for us for this report? Anything? No, nothing? No? Okay, well, last time. I have to pick one for them. Okay, uh, let's pick nonfiction. And again, I'm going to pick um, nonfiction and nonfiction adult because I don't know which one they use, but if they don't use it, it won't show up. So it doesn't matter. Now, um, I'm going to break my rule and I'm not going to put record status final. The reason why is um, if the most popular items in the collection last year are now set to be deleted, I still want that information. And those items might be um, on the list to be deleted. They might be deleted already, especially if we're looking at last year's thing. There is a process by which when we mark an item for deletion, it's purged from the database af after a certain point. But I'm not going to put record status final just in case that item is marked deleted because um, a patron lost it and they paid for it. You weeded it because it was in bad condition. We still want that information. So I'm going to leave record status alone. But I'm going to go down to item circulation filters. And year to date, well, we we hmm, we did previous year circ count. So this one maybe we can't do with previous year. We might have to do just with oops, with um, current year circ count. So I'm gonna just go put year to date circ count back in there. And year to date circulation greater than or equal to, and I said select a number. My suggestion is five. Um, depending on how big your library is. So let's just see how which items circulated five or more times. Greater than or equal to five. Oop. Did I? Oh, I missed this. Okay. I'm going to just run that one more time. There we go. Okay. The reason um, I didn't have it sorted by circ count before, so that's why it looked like there were only items with five. So there's only 13 items in this collection that circulated that have circulated more than um, five times. Now we're looking at year to date circ count. So this is going back from January 1st, 2020 to present day. It's not really possible for an item to circulate more than this unless it's being checked out and returned every single week right? Because most people take out an item and they keep it for close to the three weeks. So if we calculate how many three week intervals there were between now and back to January 1st, five or six is about the number we'll be able to get. So, um, so yeah, these are the most popular items in this collection so far this year. And we could have a look here at some of these items. So the aging brain proven steps to prevent dementia and sharpen your mind. Um, that circulated five times already. Um, ancient secret of flower life. You might see things kind of um, pop up uh, in trends as the seasons change. So maybe this person who's looking at um, the flower book here is um, going to be excited for more gardening once the weather gets better. And if I'm not seeing a lot of things, I can change this number to, to lower. So let's see if three or more circs so far. Well, that gives me a lot more results. 
So you might be able to see more trends if you if you reduce the number of CERCs um, so far this year. Okay. Some um, yeah. So that was one of my tips and tricks. Choose choose a lower number for year to date circulation greater than if you want more results. Um, I also have a little tip there. If you aren't sure of your collection codes, um, there's a quick report in Polaris you can run for this, and I have it listed there. Um, any questions about this most popular items in a collection in the past year? Um, just a comment, and this is um, from Haley at PRL, and she says, when you select the branch, mm -hmm. um, just going, I'm just reading this for the first time here. Is that limit the count to the branches? Oh, it's a question. Sorry. Okay. When you select the branch, is that limit the count to the branches item or their patrons? Or is it to, or would it be circs from other branches it would as be well? Cir it would be circs from other branches as well. Okay. Um, so to limit patrons, um, I'd have to play with this so we could do patron branch also Stony Plain. So yes, um, Haley's right. Those circulations don't necessarily mean those are Stony Plain patrons using those books. So if I limit the branch or the patron branch down here to Stony Plain, I get about half as many results. So this will um, let me know that these items were circulated to um, Stony Plain patrons. Now, the only thing is, I'm not 100% sure if it's just looking at currently circulated to Stony Plain patrons or past as well, because I don't know if we really store that information or how long we store it for. Um, I'd have to get back to you on that one if you wanted to just patrons. How to sure, start. that would be great. And there's a comment from another user um, that says, well, we are working together, right, to build the collection. And, and, and I think that's, you know, that, that's a fair comment. We are certainly um, building collections that go out to all of the users within our region. Um, but when it comes down to it, you are also filling up your library with books that you want um, your patrons to use. So you can look at the data from, from both ways to help with your collection development, certainly. You can look at what's being um, borrowed from your collection um, by all patrons in the region and by pa just patrons from your library. Um, both, both types of reports are going to give you some interesting data to help you make decisions about what to buy. Yeah, yeah, and, and another, another thing about um, including call number in this report is you can also take this and, and look at it within the bigger context of that Dewey range, right? So. Um, you could look at your top 100 and see which parts of the Dewey range they are from to make sure that your your collection in that area is um, is robust, right? Any more questions? No, nope, nothing right now. Okay. All right, last report. Uh, we're going to look at current checkouts by your patrons where you don't own a copy. So. These are, um, I'm just going to close out of that and leap in case anybody else needs to look at that big record. Okay, so this one is an item list report. It's going to give me a list of titles. Um, we're going to look for mark title. Mark author. Oops. My mouse is having an interesting time and keeps at clicking on things. Um, item assigned collection. Uh, mark primary type of material. And item home branch. Now, sometimes I like to put columns in here just to double check my work. So I'm putting item home branch in here just to double check that I, I set up these parameters correctly and I'm not getting items from my branch. So column selected for sort, mark primary type of material. So we're gonna have it sorted first by the type of material it is, book, audio book, CD, um, et cetera. 
And then I'm going to have it sorted by item assigned collection name. Again, because not all track libraries use the same collection codes, um, you're going to see some variation here, but you might see the variation might be nonfiction versus nonfiction adult or fiction versus mystery, right? Um, it's not going to be huge, huge differences because they're going to be organized by material, but you can kind of conglomerate them afterwards. Okay. Item general filters. We're going to go owner. Oops, sorry, not assigned branch. We want to go to owner, which is down here. Any libraries want to volunteer for this one? Uh, any library? Let's see. Uh, Taryn from Beaumont. So Beaumont. Okay, oops, I was just at Beaumont. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> okay, and now we're going to go circ status out. So these are currently items that are checked out. Now, of course, under non-pandemic circumstances, item circulation status changes all the time. So this is going to be a dynamic report. If you run it, um, even a couple hours from now, it might show you slightly different things. If you if you were to run it um, a week from now, it might look totally different depending on whether people returned items or not. Now, patron general filters. Um, patron branch, you're going to choose your library, so Beaumont. Oh, and I did something wrong up there. Um, I don't want the owner to be Beaumont. I want everybody's books except Beaumont's. So this is how you do it. You click the first item or the first library in the list, Acadia. You scroll all the way down, hold shift and click the last item in the list for owner. Then you scroll back up to Beaumont. And I'm going to hold down once I get to Beaumont, I'm going to hold down the control button and click Beaumont. So now you see every library is selected except Beaumont. So now I'm looking at Beaumont patrons who have items checked out that are owned by everyone except Beaumont. So that's the key to this report is that um, under item general filters, under owner, you'll see my note there, select all libraries, but your own. And if you need to be reminded of how to do that on the keyboard, I put it in the tips and tricks so that you can remember that shift and control trick. Okay, so submit. Submit this report. Okay, so our preview is limited to 1000 rows, but there's over 1400 results. So, um, Beaumont patrons have over 1400 books checked out from other or but items, CDs, DVDs, whatever checked out from other libraries because we included all material types. So here's this list. Oh, here we go. Now, remember what I showed you a couple reports ago about how we could convert this um we could convert this into a table where it would allow us to sort the columns a little bit better. Um, so again, I'm going to hold, I'm going to click on this first column, hold shift and click the other columns so that it selects each of them. I'm going to format it as a table. It doesn't really matter which formatting you choose. You just want to make sure that you select my table has headers because then it'll keep these at the top and allow you to sort by them. So I could sort by, well, I've already had it sorted by, um, audiobook compact disc, I could sort by home branch name. So um, so I can see A to Z where all these items are coming from. Um, but probably the most helpful, as I said before, is going to be material type, which is how we sorted it initially, and collection name. So I'll sort by this second. Now, what I would do to make this um, to make this data a little easier to work with, uh, collection name, and then let's do this collection name and then item type. I would literally cut these out. So if I highlight all these rows, all of these are audiobook compact discs. Some are adult, some are juvenile, but I'm going to just cut them. So right click, cut. I'm going to make a new tab and I'm going to paste them in there. And I can rename this tab audiobooks. 
And then I can work with this data a little bit, or I can look just at the audiobooks and see if there's any trends I can spot here. Now, this if doing it this way, cutting and pasting the, the items out of there and looking closely at them, it's a lot of work. So this might not be something you'd want to do every single month. This might be an audit you do once a year or or if you've got um, you know, a volunteer or a practicum student who needs some work to do, um, might be a good task for them. So, so yes, um, any questions about this report? Let me see if I left anything out. And there's no questions here yet. Okay. Um, in the tips and tricks, I said you'll want to run this report from time to time. Now, I, I say that, but like I said, it takes a lot of time. The other thing we could do here is maybe filter by material type. So if I just want to look at books, I can just check off book. If I just want to look at, I don't know, what, what DVDs my um, patrons are bringing in, I could, I could limit it to, um, to that material type. Is it in here? Equipment. There we go. Video, DVD, and let's say I wanted to see Blu-ray and DVD. I could shift click those two things and I could run this report just so I'm seeing those material types. So if you're working on only a particular type of the collection, you could filter it that way too, right? For those of you who love to make lists and routines, this is a really great way to um, sort of start to build a collection development routine. Um, you know, maybe at certain points of the year, you're going to be focusing solely on DVDs and Blu-rays, and then that would be the time that you would run a report like this, so you could start to see these particular trends. You could even, if you want to really nerd out with your work, um, combine this with, um, combine this collection development work um, with weeding and other, um, uh, other collection work in this area too. Yeah, all right. Any questions? None so far, eh? So um, these are just four reports that I pulled out of the Simply Reports depository. Um, you know, they they are uh, they are helpful. That last report that I showed you, the um, current checkouts by your patrons where you don't own a copy, that's not in the Simply Reports depository. I kind of cobbled that one together for the purposes of this webinar. But um, Jessica um, pointed out that resource last time. Um, she had it in the handouts. Um, it, that's just stored on Yellowhead's website. And uh, maybe we can put the link in the chat. Um, I'll just go on. I'll show you where it is on the website. When I'm looking I literally just search simply reports. Oops, simply reports depository. And there it is under our training. It's here, simply reports depository. And um, as we talked about in Jessica's um, webinar last week, um, one of the best things you can do during this time period where you're um, you know, away from the library with no patrons, not able to work with your code is, um, as I said before, go through this depository and run every single one of these reports to get a little bit of practice with how Simply Reports works. Because just because I showed you these reports doesn't mean you have to run them this way. You can tweak the parameters a little bit like I showed you in the last one by um, limiting material type so that you get fewer results or more specific results. So the better oriented you are to Simply Reports, the more things you can create on your own um, and the more ways you can use reports or modify them to really help you out. No more questions, hey? No. Okay. No, we're good. Okay, well, that's it for this um, webinar. So um, I'll stick around for a couple minutes in case any last minute questions do come in, but. Thank you everyone for participating. I hope that you have um, four interesting reports that you can go run. And now's a great time to run them because um, our holds are frozen. So you kind of have like a really great snapshot in time of some data that's not going to change no matter how long it takes you to work with it. So um, 
it's a great thing to practice at this moment. Um, and I'll just put this link in the chat to everyone. In case you wanna go see the Simply Reports depository. Okay, well, have a great day and let us know if you have any questions or if you need uh, Yellowhead's help with anything. Um, getting, getting yourself started with Simply Reports or direction to any of our other resources, we're happy to help you with that. And thanks everyone for coming. We miss seeing you, we miss visiting your libraries, we miss receiving your phone calls and these webinars and the coffee chats are as good as it gets right now. So please tune in next Tuesday. Jessica is doing a webinar on using Library Aware. Um, do you want to add anything about that, Jessica? I, I, we're going to be talking primarily library aware and then a discussion about social media, um, just in general. Um, uh, so please join us next week and on Thursdays for our weekly coffee chats, which are, which are a lot of fun. Yes. Hope to see you guys there. And um, there's a survey at the end of this. It'll pop up when you leave. Please fill that out and give us some feedback so we can keep making our webinars better and better. All right. I'm going to try to figure out how to stop this recording and how to stop the presentation.